We're glad to have you back. The National Information Technology Development Agency says micro, small, and medium enterprises, entrepreneurs must adopt and adapt to technology, digital technologies, if they are to survive in the 21st century. The agencies disclosed that the adoption of digital technologies will increase productivity and profitability of businesses. There is therefore the need for inclusion of technology to ensure sustained growth of SMEs across the country. Let's talk more about leveraging technology to drive the growth of SMEs in the country. Founder, Knowledge Digest Africa. Also a colleague, <laughs> uh, Mr. Samson uh, or Latine. Thank you so much. It's good to have you in the studio. Thank you. Thank you for having me. <laughs> well, let's start with what are some of the issues around SME's knowledge gap that you understand? I think uh, I'll start by saying that you know that we have three sets of SMEs. You have the informed, non-informed, and misinformed. Mm. And then the informed already understand that the next level of business growth is for them to begin to think about taking their business online. Yeah. Now, the misinformed uh, don't, and, and uninformed don't even have the necessary information that is required. Even though they see it, they hear people talk about it, but they don't believe it. Why? Because, you know, human nature, you're used to something. This is how you get your result. And then somebody's saying you can use this to optimize or do more. Because of the fear of acceptability, because of the fear of exposure, because of the fear of you don't want to get your business out there, because you don't want the tax people to run after you. Now, there's a major shift uh, for those who are informed, who are SME informed, and those who are misinformed or un uninformed, because of the fact that they don't want to get their business online. So the knowledge gap is knowing what to do and how to go about using those tools to optimize for productivity and profitability to your business is what is very important. And that's what you see happening in the industry. Now, in a developing country, many yeah. people prefer to do their business the way they are doing it. They don't want to adapt to change. I mean, it's almost everywhere. Even when you look at government, many things by now, uh, just like what um, the, the, the governor of uh, Cross River is talking about, you know, many results would have been achieved more if they power tech in education, agriculture, in many things they are doing. That means that they can achieve more results than even what is, is talked about that has happened in Cross River. And that's because with technology, many things can happen. So the knowledge gap is, uh, is there, is much by people not willing to just adopt to change and be able to change their game to have more results for themselves. So what does technology play in SMEs, particularly for growth and development? What role does it now play? We're looking at, uh, we say after the COVID-19 and all of that, we just shifted so much into technology. But what really does it add? What value? So I, I think one of the thing, things um, uh, COVID-19 has done is to expose us to what is possible. Mm -hmm. Even though you know that it's possible, but the fear of you trying it has made COVID-19 to expose us to many things. The Zoom has been there, the webcam has been there, Google Meetup has been there. These are platforms that many people in developed countries use, but many of us in this part of the country, developing country, are not used to it. And so when COVID came, I mean, you can't have access to go out, many things are happening. You have no choice than to begin to learn the rudiment or how you can use those tools. So for instance, do you know that as, as, as small as Google My Business may be, it can position what anybody is doing. It can, make you, it can make people know where your um, address of your company is. It can make people know who you are, what you are doing, your specification around what you are doing. That's just Google My Business. Imagine you trying to put everything you're doing in one-stop platform like a website. Now, your website is just like your office, offline office, where you have people that go to that office, want to make an inquiry, but you can as well have technology to do the same thing for you, putting all of your goods and services on one platform that people can have access to. Now, imagine people wanting to pay you, and then they can't have access to pay you because of bank issues. Imagine you having a platform where you have that platform automated with a payment gateway, and people at the go where they are, they can do what we call impulse buying. So the enablement of technology is just to make you make more money, make work easier for you, save you a lot of cost. Now, if you begin to talk about many challenges around SME, it's enough for an SME to think about taking that business online. Why? Because you save yourself more costs, you can have access to the market, which is the people already are in there. Now, the knowledge of knowing what to do is where the knowledge gap is. So not that the technologies are not there, but the ability of you knowing how do I use social media platform? How do I do my campaigns? How do I target my audience? How do I use 
SEO, search engine optimization, to be able to optimize what I'm doing, what are the keywords people are searching for, so that when they search for that keyword, it gives access to people coming to my platform. So imagine you having a social media platform, trying to promote what you're doing, but not having an engaging platform where people can place order from. That's disaster. Because people will get to know what you're doing, but in case that platform fails, you have had different cases where uh, there's a shutdown social media platform for a while, sure. and everybody's saying, oh, so if this goes off, what happened to my business? So do you have like a database management system that that 20,000 followers you have on your platform, you have them in an opt-in form? Yeah, name, phone number, email, location, that you can retarget them by trying to send emails, SMS to them. Now, these are tools that is called email marketing platform, autoresponder. How do you get on a platform? And then people get a message and say, welcome. You're welcome to this platform. The next time they get another message, it's telling you about their product. Now, you are not on the system, but you have programmed everything you are doing on a schedule that helps you to be able to communicate to your audience who are your potential customers. Now, what that does is simply using technology to advance that you cannot be there to for seven, but there are tools that you can enable that makes you, it makes it, it seems to customers that you're always online, yeah, yeah. but the tool is like a robot powered with AI to make it easier for you. Now, the knowledge gap still remains the fundamental problem of many SMEs. How do you go about using those platforms, social media platforms to your advantage, websites to your advantage, Google My Business to your advantage, Google Meet of Zoom, even some people don't even know how to mute on Zoom. It's as bad as that. Even call professionals. Now, that's because we are not used yeah, to it. Yeah, and yeah. so it, it, the dynamics of wanting your business to be sustainable yeah. and wanting to be profitability in whatever you're doing is you thinking about tech. In enabling you to work for your business. But you know, <laughs> talking about an enabling, an interesting conversation. I must, <laughs> I must agree with you, uh, uh, Sam. But, but you know, challenges that small businesses face. We can go on, particularly in the tech space, internet, mm -hmm. tax issues, uh, <laughs> yeah, rural communities, yeah. the environment. Now, what do you think? Can you highlight what does the SME really need to succeed? What are those kind of environment do you think they need? Tech SME. So first, I think that the government has to come in. Because the government have the have ability or the capacity to make many things happen oh, for the SMEs. A lot to come in. A lot, a well, lot to I come agree. in. Why? is because the growth of any nation is based on the SME. Mm. I mean, the lifeblood of any nation, any state, any country is based on the SME. Over 50% of the SME power the economy. Right? So it means that if you have over 50% of SME power the economy, it means that the government needs to begin to think about the environment. I mean, so imagine me having access to light 247. Imagine me knowing when to get to my meeting without me getting stuck in traffic because the good, they are not good roads. Now, it doesn't happen in a developed country. I know when my train will get to me. I know what my meeting will be and all of that. Now, these are fundamental uh, critical infrastructure that government has to put in place. And it makes it easier for me. Now, there's a lot of double taxing happening to SMEs. SME don't even want to display what they are doing because they know that the tax people will go after them. Now, if it's seamless and the government can have some kind of rebate, you know, the first three years, you're not going to have access to be paying tax and then you're going to use that to build your business. Now, imagine an SME trying to want to promote using a billboard. It doesn't have the capacity. Mm -hmm. The costing of that billboard, yeah. you know, we can make him start something. So there are many things that are not enabling the SMEs to do a lot of things. And the alternative for them is for them to think about the tech. I can log on to social media, register an account for free, and begin to power what I'm doing, and begin to project what I'm doing without me paying. Now, do we have that same facility? Now, even think about it. Can we have internet access in all the local governments? And then it's like an hub, a tech hub for each of the local governments. Now, imagine the kind of changes that will happen. That if there's no power in your house, in your office, you have a way of getting a ticket based on the fact that you are a resident in that uh, state and then can have access to go to a tech hub and go do what you're, you're going to do. Now, what has happened is that private sector has come in to create different tech hub. So imagine me paying a rent. The cost of rent is high. So everything I'm saying is around infrastructure. But I know I can go to a tech hub and I can pay for as low as 5000 naira to have a time belt for me to do what I want to do without me trying to pay for a rent for one year. So all of the things that can enable an SME to strive in an economy like in, Niger in Nigeria or any developing country is not really there. Mm. So now, where does the government also come in? Yeah. Government can begin to partner with the, with the 
CSR of, gov of, of organizations that are doing well, big corporate organization. So just imagine you saying, okay, from your tax you're doing road from your from your tax you are enabling all of the local government within this state, you know, to have a tech or power that people can have access to. Imagine you getting into a school and have an internet connection working effectively See, in an educational sector. Yeah. Now look at you getting into university, getting into polytechnic, you PT. Because these are people that are supposed to have access to be able to make do their assignment without rushing to a business center to be able to get assignment done just because there is no infrastructure yeah. done by government to make it happen. So where the private sector comes in is to have a collaboration. It's like a stakeholders meeting, having the SMEs, having the startup, having the tech guys. Now, if I begin to tell you the statistics of how many tech um, investors come in to invest into startups, as against what government have the capacity, even partnering with organizations to make that happen. So what happens even to the educational sector about host learning? Now, many things are wrong. For instance, you can hardly see a local content. Just like, you know, um, the governor of course we are talking about, do we have a video that documents the process of agriculture? That if I want to start, I can go to that video. I have an office I can go to. I'm not going to be sabotaged. I'm, I will have access to information that will enable me to start working on the local content of what has happened in my country. You, we've got, we have a long way to go. Now, this is supposed to be like a research of in every state that I know that, okay, in Cross River, this is what they are blessed with. In Ogun State, yeah. this is what they are blessed yeah. with. And I get into there. Now, there are institutions, don't forget, in government, but they are not powered with tech. So it means that I cannot even get the information at a go. I have to get there. And if I even get there, I'm going to be frustrated because the irrelevant information I need, and they will tell me the person is not even on seat. I have to register for this and all of that. So you see, th there's a lot yeah. that government needs, needs to, to do, do to make this work for SMEs. Let's wrap up on this note. Uh, do you think our uh, youths are taking advantage of this? You, you do a lot of... Uh, you know, all of initiatives, you yeah. know, trying to bring youths together, you know, educate them, bring up topical issues. But how receptive will you say our youths are with regards to tech? You see, a, a, a guy came in from South Africa and said one of the things people are afraid about Nigerians is that their aggressiveness to mm. things. I think if we get into another part of the world, we'll succeed more. And that's why you see many blacks, many, many African, many Nigerians are dominating. Because the zeal, I mean, everything yeah. works against you, but you're still saying, yeah. hey, yeah. I'm going to yeah. make this yeah. happen. Yeah. We are consistent, persilience. We can go the extra mile. We are not getting tired, even though we have a lot of things working against us. So what that means is that the youth are not lazy, the way they have tagged it. It's just that like everything is working around against the young people for them to be able to be exceptional. I mean, look at the migration rate that has happened in the last six months. Mm. I mean, That's now amazing. many is going to happen even after May 29 because people are just watching and say, let me see what happened. Is it going to work or not? Now, the migration we are going to see after math will depend on what our incoming president is going to do. If he's going to make it enabled for young people, SMEs to be able to do a lot of it, just like you know, the cross River uh, governor is talking about, that there's a lot of things that needs to be done. Yeah. There's a value chain that we, can, we should be able to see. Yeah. There's a result process that we, mm. we can see that, okay, there's a group, that everything is working towards the development of young people and SMEs in a way to power what they are doing to achieve more results. So for me, I think that you know, private sector will do their part, but if there's a proper synergy, it will go a long way to help the young people. For instance, you would know that many young people, you know, a graduate is out five years, six years, ten years, not having, you know, yeah. work. And the truth is that if we have powered our curriculum and powered it with tech knowledge, um, have tech ops in those universities, in those polytechnics, make it a compulsory courses that they have to do, make them come up with a project. I'm telling you, in, 20, in, in two years, if you don't get a work, or even in one year, if you don't get a, a work as a graduate, you know the next thing you're supposed to do. So how are we beginning to put all of those curriculum into realization of the future of work? Now, imagine, we're talking about uh, electric car, we're talking about yeah. water car, yeah. we're still talking about petroleum here, we're talking about, I mean, so many things seems to be a major challenge that, has to be controlled from the government to the private sector, and then there has to be a major stakeholder uh, kind of forum. Not that we have not had it, but the implementation of those stakeholders meeting 
is very important. I must thank you so much, <laughs> Mr. Samson Olatunde. It's the first time on the show. Yes. Obviously, we'll have you in again uh, to give us this, your I, I brilliant uh, contributions. <laughs> he you. is the founder of Knowledge Digest Africa. Thank you so much. Do enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you so much. <laughs>